Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise God from Psalms 144. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day and this hour. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we humble ourselves before you. We ask, oh God, that you would wash us in your blood, oh God. Cleanse us from our sins and iniquities, oh God. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would come in by your spirit, oh God. Fill us with your presence and with your power, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would have your way, oh God, in the midst of us, oh God. Lord, look upon this altar, oh God. You see every family, every member that is here, oh God. We ask that you would come and send your blood, oh God. Lord, save our loved ones and our household, our families, oh God. Lord, you see and you know, oh God. We bind the enemy, oh God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, oh God. We come against this coronavirus and this new variant, oh God. Lord, we ask, oh God, that your anointing, oh God, would destroy the yoke, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God. For our past and our separate, oh God. We ask that you would anoint them, oh God. Lord, and turn their hearts, oh God. Let your glory go forth, oh God. And bring healing and deliverance, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for your love and your grace, oh God. We bind the enemy on every hand. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Lord, we come against, oh God, the spirit of murder, the spirit of violence. 
Everybody can want to clap your hands and bring it back to us. I said, come on, clap your hands and bring it back to us. Oh, I'm going to start again. Clap your hands and bring it back to us. Answered midstream. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. And so I encourage you, the words say faith come by hearing. If you are a minister, let me say this, if you are a minister in this house and you don't like Sunday school, I question your call to the gospel. I'm going to say that again. If you are a minister, a ministry leader in this house and don't like Sunday school, my question, are you called to preach the gospel? Because if anything, a preacher, a minister, a deacon, a deaconess should love the word of God. Got quite a bit of Jesus. I'm just telling the truth, y'all. Come on. And if you are a leader, leaders lead by example. Somebody say by example. Our job is to lead by example. And if those who are with us don't see us coming to summer school, why then should they come to Sunday school? Yes, sir. It's okay. I got, I, I, I got a pocket full of amens right now. Amen. Amen. And so I encourage you, listen, the only way you're going to grow spiritually is to come to Sunday school, be in the Word of God. And you have to feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Amen, somebody. That's one of the reasons the devil is going to get the victory in our lives because we don't really know what we think we know. And it's one thing to come here and look and look wonderful and look spiritual when you get here. But when you get home, I ain't gonna be at your house trying to pray you through. Come on, somebody. And the devil is gonna be trying to give you a fit. Amen. And make sure it's not just me. How many of you all the devil been giving you a fit all week? Come on, somebody. And so listen, he's been attacking. Listen, he's been attacking. So our job is to make sure we get enough word so that we know how to stand. Hosea honoring the faithfulness of God. And I tag a title to it, Trusting God in the Dark. Because there are going to be seasons in our lives when things happen that you are just not going to understand why. And maybe I'm the only person who ever asked God, God, why did you allow this? And God, why did you allow that? You don't always have the why. But when you don't know why, you will know who.
Listen, I want to also invite both of you who are part of our e-church. If you have been blessed by this, uh, this stream, let me invite you to be a part of our sowing process. You can sow through uh, Venmo, you can sow through Zelle, or sow through Cash App. Let me invite you, please. The Bible says this, that God gives seed to the sower. And if you are bold enough to tell the devil he's a liar and sow your seed, I believe this is good ground. And we thank you in advance for your seed sown. All right. Uh, so we thank God that you did our family and friends. Thank you. all thank God for our family and our friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let me thank God for our choir as they come. Give them a big hand and praise them all. Have a good time.
their deliverance in the name of Jesus. I promise if you call them, something's going to happen. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody 
Are you scared of these children? I don't care if they about to get poked out and dragged on the ground. You check their, 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 their cell phone, check their iPad, get their password, and go in it every day. Because if you don't see what they're doing, you don't know what's going on. Help me, Jesus. And go through every site. Make them open everything up. So then you want to see all their pictures, all their videos. Tell us about it. That's called accountability. Somebody say accountability. And if you don't hold them accountable, they'll do whatever they want to on your phone. Go in their history on their phone. Come on, priest pastor. I said get their phone, go in the history. Listen, people, they may take the history and delete it. They're the place you can find it. You want to know, ask me, I tell you how to find all their history for the last two years. Y'all better come over here. Listen, your child's life is in your hands. God's hoping you responsible for these children. Amen, church. I can't tell you the guys I talk to who, who are coming out of the prison. And these guys who were in jail, and I talk to these guys, hey man, how you get here? Most of them say they had no father, had no mother, but the most of them said no one held them accountable. I'm trying to help somebody. And that's how they got in jail and got in trouble because no one held them accountable. I challenge you. Hold the baby accountable. Watch them now. Make them pray with you. Ooh, but I'm in the wrong church today, Jesus. I said, ask them to pray with you. Pastor, what they're doing? It's called developing a relationship with God. And you know, according to the Bible, I read, the Bible says that if you don't do it, God's going to hold you accountable. Let me pray. Come on, baby. Come on. Raise your hand. Come on. Sugar, raise your hand, baby. This is called an act of surrender. We're just giving our hand to God. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for this chair. You said that the truth of God were your habits. And I pray for every young man and every young lady, Father. God, I pray that long after I'm gone, that they will call these moments where we took the time in the service to make them feel special. And Father, I pray long after I'm gone that the same spirit that they receive in this house, they will impart to their children. And I pray that you would keep them. God, cover them all the days of their lives. God, protect them from hurt, harm, and danger. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. Father, build a hand about them as they come and as they go. Father, prosper their way. Give them an excellent spirit. And we decree and declare the death and blessing on their lives. And they will be ten times smarter in all those in their class. As they go through school, we decree they're ten times smarter. They have the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. We declare and decree over their lives for all the days of their lives. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you all turn to your, what are you going, this way, this way, this way. Uh, look that way? Okay. All right, y'all, y'all, I get a hand with you, come on. Wait a minute. Y'all go, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. I'm going to tell y'all what I keep on learning, okay? Now, I want to get them to do it what most of y'all can't do. All right? Watch this. Give me the whole uh, the whole Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentish, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Melchizedek. Hey!
this is what our children are learning, you know, when they leave here, they begin to learn about the Lord. And just so you know, they're learning Bible structure, how the Bible is broken down, history, poetry, all these things, they are learning the Word of God. This is the way I encourage you all. If you bring your children to church, I promise you, you will teach them the Word of God. Amen. And you all bless God again for our children. Come on. Before I forget, I want to uh, bless God for Master Shepherd and Brother Shannon celebrating their anniversary. <laughs>
That's the game we play. Yes. Don't y'all look at me funny like that. <laughs> like that the first time we were in the song. What he was saying was, if you love me, then show me that you love me. When it comes to us saying we love God, how can we say we love God and don't follow his instructions? Jesus said, why well, call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say. And so understand, family, there's going to come a time in our Christian world, and it is better that we do it sooner than later, that we learn how to put our complete trust in God. In our text in verse number five, it says, trust in the Lord. It says, don't lean to your own understanding. If we will look back over our lives, all of us can see some scars in our lives. Watch this, not where God messed us up, but where we messed our own self. Come on, by show of hands, how many folks can testify you made some bad decisions in your life? Woo, come on, I'm going old school now. How many of y'all, if you could turn back to hammer time, you would? But understand you all in life, we don't always get a do-over. And now sometimes that God will allow us to suffer the consequences of our decision. And someone may tell you that God is getting you, listen, God's not getting you, you are getting the results of a decision that you made. Oh, yeah. See, watch this. See, see if, if, if you marry somebody who, who is special, <laughs> I'm trying to be nice today. I won't call them weird. I won't call them crazy. They're just special. The odds are, if you look deep enough, they will show you who they are before you get to the altar. But most of the time, what you do, while well, you understand, Pastor, I can't back out now. I done passed out my invitations. So many folk have made the bad decision over some invitations. I would rather bag out now. Come on, somebody. I tell you, anybody I marry, if, if you want to bag out at the altar, we'll go in the back, throw a party, and everybody go home. <laughs> y'all ain't talking back to me. So I'm going to give y'all another old school song because it's cheap anyway. I'm going to move Because something you can't undo once it's done. But God, the Bible said to trust in the Lord. Now, the word trust means to have firm belief in. It means to have reliability in. Pastor, in what? It means in his truth or his truth. Uh, confidence in his strength. So, and so when we say we trust in the Lord, it means that God, I put here it is, my total confidence in you. Somebody say, is it God? Is it God? Understand over in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, it says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Now, why would God tell you and I to not cast away our confidence? Y'all, good class, I'm glad you asked. He said, Because your confidence, our confidence, here it is, has a great recompense of reward. In other words, you won't pray to God if you don't have a confidence in the God you're praying to. You won't read the word of God if there's no confidence you have in his word. And so he says, whatever you do, you hang tight. Get a firm grip on your confidence. Come on, let's say confidence. Because if the enemy can steal your confidence, watch this now, he probably has you too. Because how are you going to pray to a God you don't trust? How are you going to pray when you think God is the one who messed up your life? You think God is the one who got you sick? You think God is the one? Listen, you all, God is not the one who has made us sick. But truth is, every disease that has come into the world has came because of sin. Come on, class, say sin. Sin is the reason we have all these things going on in the world. I'm tired of folks saying, well, yeah, the reason God broke, broke come on, is so God can teach us a lesson. If God wants to teach you a lesson, God don't have to use Corona to do it. But it's because of the curse.
curse of sin that came upon the world, watch this now, sin opened up a portal to allow all kinds of things to come into the world. But for the children of God, God knows how to keep you and I in the middle of a hard time. And I want to give it anybody in this room who let God know how to keep you with all this stuff and breaking out around you. I don't care what's going on in the atmosphere. I serve a God who knows how to keep me in the middle of a crisis. Somebody said, I know he'll do it. I know he'll do it. The writer of 1 John, he says, chapter 5, he says, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, here it is, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, then we know we have the petition we desire of him. In other words, the reason I can pray is because I know I'm telling God what he's already promised me. And anytime you tell God what he's already promised you, you know you have what he said. Somebody said God will do just what he said. Now understand for me when I talk about living in God's system, I mean that sometimes God's systems may not make sense to the natural mind. And this family is where the enemy comes against us. Because everything God tells us to do, we want to find out if it makes sense to the natural mind. But your Bible says that the carnal mind cannot comprehend the thing of the Spirit of God. And so I don't care who you are, if, unless you're walking in the Spirit of God, when God gives you an instruction, there are some things that won't make sense to your natural mind. And so our job, your wife is now, is to make sure we are led by the Spirit of God. In other words, our job is to not try to figure out how God's going to do it, but if God give me one instruction, that one instruction can turn my whole life completely around. And I wonder how many of us have heard God tell us something, and we want to run about four fingers to find out if this, this will obey what God told me to do. Listen, if God told you, oftentimes there are folk around you who won't understand what God has told you. And the truth be told, there are people in your life right now who will try and talk you out of doing what God told you to do. How many folk understand that when we stand before God, God ain't going to bring your boo with you. He's going to ask you, did you do what I said? Come on, even for the believer, God will judge us based on our obedience to what he's told us to do. And so if you and I then are going to have our, the, the, the landscape of our lives to be changed the way God wants them to be changed, God says, I'll take you there, but you must do what I tell you to do up front. Pastor, what do you mean? Look at Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. Isaiah said, if ye be willing and no being, ye shall eat the good of the land. Now look you all at the text. What's the first word? Yeah. Come on, class. What is it, man? Yeah. If. Now watch this. God said, I'm not going to make you obey me. The choice is up to you. But if you obey me, if you do what I say, watch this now, and be obedient, he says, here's my promise. You shall eat the good of the land. You recall when God told Moses to send out the 12 spies. Send out 12 preachers. 12 guys who should have their eyes on God. God, God said, Moses, send them over into the land I promised you. To a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Now watch this. He sent up the 12 spies you all, and the 12 spies got up to the land, and the Bible says for 40 days, they were on the land. They were eating the land, eating from the grapes and the milk. Everything the land produced, they were there. But watch this. They kept their eyes on the giants. They said, these people are too great for us. And watch this. They said, we are as grasshoppers in their sight. Now watch this. You won't find it anywhere in the text where those people call them grasshoppers. And there are 
have some folk in the family of God, you better get rid of the grasshopper image in your mind. Because there's too many of us who see ourselves too small. See, the Bible said to don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But God never said to not think high. Oh, tell the person by you, say, bring your thinking up. Come on, that's it. Bring your thinking up. Come on. You better see yourself as being the head and not the tail. See yourself being blessed as you come in and as you go out. See yourself being healed. See yourself being delivered. See God open your doors. See God making ways. You gotta see it before you possess it. Somebody start to say, see it, see it, see it, see it. Here's my house, I bought it. 
This is my car. I bought it because you won't get me your back. I bought it. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't talking back to me if you You don't have to follow my rules. Leave my house. Thank you. 
give you a GPS. I will lead you to the place I want you to go. But our challenge is we hook up a fool who got their opinion against God. And then we'll jump on somebody else. We'll jump against God to side with somebody because and when you know that that's my friend. If listen, if, if my friend don't agree with God, I'm going with God. I say I'm going with God. It's called the laws, the, the law of decision. And the law of decision can be defined as the result or the backlash I received as a result or as a result of the choices I made. See, you can't pray and say, oh no, if me, I was so much debt. And you think God gonna pay your credit bill every month? That you keep running up? That's called being that's called discipline. That quiet right there, Jesus. I say it's called discipline. There's so many of God's folk who are in mega debt right now, not because the devil did it, but because you couldn't put the credit card in your pocket. Can I give you a finance 101? A credit card is not meant to be ran up. You charge it and you pay the balance off at the end of the month. That's how the credit folk get rich off the interest you owe them. You can't keep going buying that dress. Don't fit you no way. Leave it in the store, baby. You mind your own. You ain't got any time. No one to go but the church. Come on, somebody. You don't have to charge. How many of y'all recall the day of, of layaway? And by the church. Come on. If you didn't have the money, you go to your island. Say it. How much you put down? I got five dollars. Oh, where is my five dollar church? Come on. My five dollars. I got five dollars. But watch this. They said if you didn't make another payment in 30 days, it goes back on the shelf. And you made sure by day 29. Here's my, my ticket, here's my five dollars. <laughs> but after a year, you find a guy. Come on, somebody. Yo, I'm in the wrong church today. <laughs> See, you, you can't keep complaining about God, my light bill too high. Listen, when you leave the room, cut the light off. If he want to hang out with you, 
Hey, just, you all aren't married. Let me talk clear. Can y'all hear me? If that joker ain't married, and he in your house, kick his backside out your house. I said, kick him out. If you like, tell him to come see me. Come on, tell him, come on, pull up on your boy. I dare him. First of all, you don't want no man that you got to take care of. Let me tell some of you mamas, tell him where he's a mama's boy. You better let them, let him go to work, make some money. If I give her that $5, by the time she turns 30, 
She'll have a whole lot of money and she won't be in the welfare line trying to pay the government to take care of her. Are you hearing me? But see, as a people, no one has taught us to save money. We want to keep up with the Joneses. I can't kind of impress folk who don't care and folk I don't know. If you ain't got it, say, I ain't going today. We're going to the club. I can't go. I ain't got the money. Come on. It's okay to say no. Come on, Brenda, say no.
then you get one call in a day. <laughs> God snatched the kingdom from Saul, but then he appointed David. Now watch this now. If we base qualifications on a moral standard, David should have been disqualified. should not have been God's choice Amen. based on the moral standard. Amen. But God would rather yes. use somebody yes, God. he can trust. Oh, yes, God. Yes. He can change the moral standard, yes. but give me somebody God I can trust. Yes, God. Yes. See, therefore, who don't think I qualify. Sometimes I don't think I qualify. But God knows he can trust me. Yeah. He knows he can trust me. Saul couldn't be trusted. And God said, because I couldn't trust you, I pull the kingdom out of your hand. Amen. Listen, you know, there's some of us, the reason we are losing things is because we refuse to obey God. Here is my challenge to you. Make a decision that God, this week, I'm going to practice living by your system. Now watch this now. I, I didn't say that you do everything perfect. But make a decision. Or I'm going to go old school with y'all. Go WWJB on it. What would you just do? Before you give somebody a piece of your mind, ask the question, what would you just do? Before you decide that I'm going to hate on somebody, ask the question, what would Jesus do? Because now we hear the truth. If God gave us what we deserve, we all be messed up.
when the Philistines were chasing Samson out to the desert. The Bible says they wanted to kill Samson. But what Samson did not know was that God had some wild animals to chase a donkey in the wilderness. They ate everything from a donkey but his jawbone. Thank you. 
Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer.
Praise God. 